So in proposing this motion, uh, which uh, was, the idea was given to me by Vanessa Crichton, our chairperson of the West London branch, who in May stopped paying her licence fee. She's not alone. Uh, John Kelly, who's speaking against the motion, has been doing it for some time now, and I hope he'll give us chapter on verse on how much money he saved by not doing so. And uh, Gerard Batten, our London MEP, who finally had enough about two weeks ago and wrote them a 17-page letter explaining in great detail why he wasn't paying anymore. I've also here been handed a letter by our PPC in Bromwich, um, Steve Mawson, which I haven't had time to read yet. It's about 11 pages as well. So I'm, I'm hoping I'll be a tad briefer than that. Um, I have to apologise uh, to you all because I could have done something about this. Uh, when I was at Oxford University, I was actually offered a job as a general trainee at the BBC. Um, I was part of something called the Oxford University Broadcasting Society. I only joined because they had a recording studio and I really wanted to be a musician and I needed to get access to a recording studio. But I could, with some of my colleagues who I always thought at the time were a bit pasty, I didn't know why, I'd never met vegetarians before. <laughs> all, all of them uh, lived in this underground recording studio and recorded all day long so that they could get a general traineeship at the BBC. And even back then they were proposing vegetarianism, they were even talking about climate change back then, and they were all preparing for a lifetime at the BBC. So I have failed you because I should, really, in all honesty, have gone and joined them and I could have fought from the inside. The reason that I think that we need to do something about this now in particular, and I know that people like Lord Pearson have been monitoring this for a long time and the party owes him a great debt of gratitude for the real cost that is incurred to monitor it properly, um, but I think there's been a seed change and it happened in Norwich North. It's natural for us to complain about BBC bias. All political parties do it. I'm told the Lib Dems are furious with the BBC for how much coverage they've been giving us. What I think has changed is during Norwich North, some other people in whose interests it was for us to not get proper coverage started to notice as well. Dan Hannan in The Telegraph said that UKIP should be complaining about how badly they were treated in Norwich North. Even the East Anglian Daily Press, which had hardly mentioned us themselves, turned around afterwards and said, how did the BBC get it so wrong in Norwich North? They told us that the Greens were coming in on their white horse. Well, actually, it was a funny red bus belching chip fat. <laughs> <laughs> but they told us the Greens were riding to, the save, to be the saviors of Norwich North and make it as green as Norwich South, apparently, is, because that's where the university is. And, and they got it terribly wrong. And, and uh, Sean, Sean Berry, who um, Gerard and I had the doubtful privilege of working alongside during Gerard's mayoral campaign, said, I can't believe it. Believe it. We were beaten by crappy UKIP. Apologies for my language. It's Sean's, not mine. Um, even though the BBC was with us all the way. So that's why I think has changed. Everyone else has now started to notice. If we stand up in public and say we're not paying the license fee, we won't get laughed at anymore because even our political opponents have noticed that we're not getting a fair crack of the whip. And I'd just like to finish because Clive Page, I ran into, told him I was promoting the motion and expected Clive to be coming here to, uh, to uh, gainsay it, but he's popped off to have a barbecue with Billy Darper, so um, he'll be back later. I've got some questions for Clive. If Clive thinks we're having such a good deal from the BBC, why aren't they streaming us on the Parliament channel now from here? Why haven't they dragged, why haven't they dragged Andrew Neil back from his villa in the south of France to do his evening highlights conference? And if we agree to hold the conference in Cannes next year, will Andrew promise to do it from there? Yeah. Finally, Finally, why doesn't he invite Nigel Farage to cosy up to Diane Abbott and Michael Portillo on the sofa for their weekly loving to comment on political events? Thank you very much.